All right, good morning. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be discussing a couple of years of research that we've been uh, doing on California yellowtail uh, for uh, out of season spawning. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, California yellowtail is a seasonally abundant species in Southern California. Uh, recently, re recently for me, I guess, 2015, um, the, the species name was shifted from Lilandi to Dorsalis. Uh, so a lot of the research that we've conducted over the, over the time has been directed at, uh, well, mimicking some of the research that's been happening in Australia and Japan from Lilandi. So we consider that a pretty close cousin for uh, Dorsalis. And uh, Sariola as a species is a, is a valuable aquaculture species worldwide um, for its uh, high market value. And at Hub CEO Research Institute, we've been researching this species since 2003. Um, five years ago, uh, we all came together to really highlight the species that were of importance for expansion for U.S. Uh, fin fish, uh, marine finfish aquaculture. 18 species were uh, asked to present. 11 of the species were, uh, uh, had the, got the qualification of commercially ready. Two of those species are Seriola. One, uh, the Seriola violana is currently being cultured in Hawaii, um, and the other is Seriola dorsalis. So over the years, all of the, most of the research over the last 20 years has been focused on um, our larva rearing and juvenile rearing. Larva rearing, looking at um, the nutrition, being able to get high quality at larvae and juveniles to the juvenile stage. Uh, juvenile rearing, looking at um, alternatives to fish meal, fish oils, uh, and then the exercise physiology. And all of this was uh, with the idea that we wanted to demonstrate production of the species. So, uh, which led us to that commercial uh, culture qualification. Uh, most recently, over the last five years, we've been focused on broodstock uh, uh, research. Uh, nutrition, looking at limiting protein, limiting, limiting uh, nutrients such as arachidonic acid and taurine. Uh, looking at, uh, in terms of broodstock nutrition, also looking at commercial uh, diets that are available to us in the United States. Um, <clears throat> looking at parentage assessment, seeing who's contributing to what spawn events in these broadcast spawning tanks. And then egg quality, trying to determine um, easy to use indicators for researchers or production to say uh, what, are, what good batches of eggs are and bad batches of eggs are. And so um, this all led us to the road of uh, controlled spawning. So all the research that we talked about, or I talked about briefly, uh, it's all in a finite amount of time between six months over the season because we don't have control. And so that really puts a lot of pressure in terms of trying to get projects done and, um, <clears throat> and being able to really figure out what you can uh, research. So, why it's important, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory for research. It extends your available time to study for production. You can then stagger your cohorts and you can be able to if, uh, um, uh, increase your production efficiency. And so we, we want to determine this by having a natural spawning group compared to a controlled spawning group side by side. And so here are just some, some quick methods. Uh, we took F generation brute stock, stocked them into two uh, 30 cubic meter tanks. We wanted to start with a two to one male to female ratio. Oops. Um. All right. <laughs> uh, we started with a two to one male to female ratio. We started with that. Um, I'll go into, uh, we didn't end with that. We had some mortalities in our tanks and I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, and then all the fish were fed similarly, three to five percent body weight with fresh fish and squid supplemented with vitamins. Um, <clears throat> the tanks they were using, uh, this is our, they're both side by side in our yard, uh, all under ambient conditions, natural uh, light and temperature. For the natural spawning tank, just had a shade, 95 percent shade, flow rate of 45 liters per minute with an egg trap. Uh, eggs are collected at around eight to nine o'clock in the morning. Um, they're usually in the trap for 15, 12 to 15 hours, so we don't see any real good, any physical damage with how we have our trap set up. We are able to collect both the floating and sinking portion of the spawn event, so we know the, uh, we know the, we should, we know the entire, um, we know we can report viability. <clears throat> Looking at our out of season spawning tank, we, we recirced, we were able to recirc uh, the tank, have a moving bed bioreactor, a drum filter to, to take away solids, a heat pump, and we did add a fluorescent light. It's probably hard to see. It's in the top right um, for just extending the photo period in the wintertime. 
And so to compare the uh, natural to the uh, out of season group, we have these metrics for egg production, looking at spawns per season, eggs per season. Uh, we use the term fecundity here. Uh, this is just, we term this as eggs per spawn event because we cannot, so we have multiple female spawning, we don't know the actual eggs per kilo female. So we're just using eggs per, per spawn event. Uh, for egg quality metrics, we're looking at viability, egg measurements, uh, hatch rates, larval length at hatch, and then uh, survival to first feeding. And this is for each spawn event that comes out of, the, out of both tanks. Uh, so this is a typical pro, uh, natural spawning profile for our fish uh, under, natural, under ambient conditions. In 2022, uh, this is uh, what we normally see. Eggs will start being produced uh, when temperature gets above 15 degrees C, and then we'll typically start in end of March and we'll go through the end of October. In 2023, uh, highlighted area here when we had unseasonably cool water coming into uh, our facility. It dropped below 14. Uh, fish didn't spawn until uh, late April and it truncated the spawning season too. So it's kind of stopped. It, they stopped in the end of September. Uh, this, this does highlight a, a good point to, you know, if you're able to control your temperature, it's probably a good, a good, uh, good reason too. <clears throat> uh, looking at our controlled spawning profile, uh, added in our 2021 just to show you how we ended up sh shifting them uh, from their natural season to our out of season spawning. Uh, so in 2021, typical spawning uh, regime, we dropped the temperature and we were hoping it was just a temperature cue. So uh, we didn't install a light yet. Uh, so we dropped our temperature, shut them off uh, in the middle of the, at the close, I guess in the middle tail end of the season. Uh, they stopped in August, spawning in August. We started to ramp up our temperature in uh, December and January. Didn't see any spawning behavior, didn't see any eggs. Uh, we added a light and I uh, mentioned some mortality. We didn't put a dimming switch on it. And once we added the light, we had a wall strike. And once we added the dimming switch, we haven't had a problem since. Uh, but we were able to get spawn events once we added the light, increased that light, the photo period to about 14. Um, we, got, uh, we got spawn events a couple weeks later. Uh, this did shorten the season. Uh, we ended up dropping them down and then coming back up, and then we have what we considered a pretty normal spawning season in 2023. So I know this is a lot, but I'm going to try to highlight the areas. Um, in terms of egg production, looking at the number of uh, eggs produced as well as the spawn events, pretty similar outside of year one in an out-of-season spawning group. And the, uh, the year one can be explained if we had added that light, I assume we'll probably have similar spawn events. <coughs> Looking at uh, overall egg production, I mean uh, fecundity and also our egg metrics, uh, year one we had a significantly lower egg production and I also mentioned that we had a mortality in our natural spawning tank. Uh, we, we lost a female in the middle of that first spawning season and what we found is with Sariola and probably with other big marine pelagics, there is a behavioral component to their spawning. Um, what, I'm, we're not sure, my assumption is we may have lost a dominant female and then another female turned on, which can uh, correlate to uh, some lower egg production or uh, fecundity numbers and then potentially some lower egg and percent oil volume numbers. <coughs> uh, and then in year two for the natural spawning group, for the hatch rates, we had significantly lower hatch rate. Um, with that lower water temperature coming in, we had really poor hatch rates, but good survival to first feeding. Um, and then once that water temperature came back up, hatch rates got to what we would consider normal in that 70, 75% range. So our conclusion, uh, is possible to add a season, uh, this seriola, uh, without an impact on egg production or egg quality. Uh, temperature is a main cue and they will stop spawning once temperature gets below 15, regardless of the, of the photo period. Uh, but in order to, just like other species, to be able to get reliable spawning uh, to occur, the temperature and the photo period need to be tied together um, as well as, as long as the temperature is above 15. Uh, future studies are going to include extension of the spawning season. We're doing that currently. Uh, we want to also determine the amount of rest time that is needed for, um, for the species. Is it necessarily five, six months uh, or can it be three months to kind of improve that hatchery um, efficiency? Uh, we also want to look at some spawn on command cues. Uh, is temperature, temperature obviously is one. 
tying in temperature and photo period to really say, okay, if you change that, can you get a spawn three days later to, again, improve your efficiencies in the hatchery? Uh, I'd like to acknowledge our funding sources, Sea Grant, USDA, Chevron, and SeaWorld San Diego, and I'll take any questions. So we have plenty of time for some questions. Questions? There you George. go. The question was, was it per uh, biomass or per spawn? It was per spawn because we had multiple females and we didn't, um, we didn't do the genetics to really see who was spawning where. All righty. All right, thank well, you. Thank you very much. Do I get, yeah, I get yeah. to take this now? Thank you. <laughs>